Hey you guys, this is Shanita and I am back for another video. A video I was not planning on recording, but here I am because this is a trial video. The entire summer has gone by. I have not done one wash and go. Yesterday, I was like, you know what? I think I wanna do a wash and go. Now here it is mid-October and the temperature has dropped significantly where I am. Don't know where that came from, but I'm gonna try it. If you've never been here before, thanks so much for watching and coming by. So I am gonna be using products today from 4C Your Beauty. If you haven't seen the haul I did showing the new products they just released, it is a must watch. There were so many brand new products there. So um, I am going to attach it in the description box. But for right now, I'm talking fast because my hair is dripping wet all over me and I know I have to keep my hair dripping wet to make this go. So we'll talk about all the other products that I use later on in the video. But for right now, my hair has been shampooed, conditioned, and I have leave-in in. I did this in the shower because I wanted to test something. So I'm gonna be using their new Mystic Mermaid. It's a curl defining cream gel. Looks like this. Again, I showed it in my um, haul video. It is a very beautiful color. And so I asked her if I could use this for a wash and go. She suggested using this and a tad bit of the um, her other product that will give me some hold. Um, that is the pink one, the custard, control custard. But uh, I don't have it with me. Um, I do have it. But I, the more I thought about it, and I took it upstairs because I was thinking about using it, and now I'm downstairs where I record, and it's not here. I decided I'm going to use this, and if I need more hold, I'm going to do the infamous wet line. Because, y'all, my hair is stubborn. Stubborn. What would work for someone with my textured hair, it just, it just doesn't work for me. So instead of... Um, doing something that I think may last me a couple of days I'm gonna go all in and that way I'm that means I'm just gonna be trying just this mystic mermaid which I'm so dying to try so now that I've got that over with I'm gonna put this plastic cap back on because I want to keep this hair as wet as possible I also have my spray bottle of which I have about this much aloe juice and the rest is water I applied there um, Daily leave-in moisturizer. Oh, this is going to be interesting. I have not done a wash and go. Oh, we, y'all. Seriously. I know it's been over a year. I know that. So I have my little clips here. I've got water. I've got the, custard, the uh, cream gel. And I've got extreme wet line. So I'm going to do a couple of sections here. I'm going to try, here's the consistency of this. Yeah, it's not as tacky as the custard, so I see what she means. But I do have on some leave-in already, and I don't know how this is all going to play out. I'm starting in the front, which I usually don't do, but I'm starting here because my hair is so low porosity here, and I lose curl definition super duper fast. So here is about the amount of gel I'm going to use starting out, and it already feels like too much. I haven't done this in so long. I'm just going to have you guys here to watch for just a little bit, and then I'm going to go off and try to get it done as quick as I can. I normally do the shingling, and I'm going to do that for a little bit of this hair in the front because... It does not curl on its own. This is that hair that has its own mind. I'm hoping not to do this all over. I really have to put gel at the root of my hair. A lot of people don't do that. That's up to you. Um, I sweat a lot during the week and I'm hoping I can get some hair out of, um, get some wear out of this wash and go for a few days. So I'm gonna actually put some gel close to the roots so that hopefully once I sweat this out it will last it'll give me some lasting power hopefully all right you guys so that is what I'm gonna do again the mystic mermaid which really feels good by the way really feels good 
rubbing it all the way through. I wanted to try this as a twist out so bad. You guys know how I love my twist. And I really was anxious to try this alone, but I will come back and do it as a twist out later. And I am just rubbing this on, making sure it gets on from root to tip. Uh, it does have moisturizing ingredients in it. Again, we'll talk about that later. All right, I'm going in with the gel. It's always so difficult to know how much when you haven't done this in a while. So I am rubbing this on, and if you've used wet line before, you know how you can feel it. It has that slimy, gelatinous property that you can just feel. I'm gonna take a little bit more for these unruly ends and rub it on and just take this and twirl. I am not even trying to go for a super, super defined wash and go. Normally when I do that, do wash and goes, that's kind of what I intend for. But this time I am not a seven day wash and go wearer by no stretch, never have been, no matter what I use. I don't even like the way it feels after seven days. So I am going to just do this at the ends. Just try to twirl some curls in with my fingers and I'm gonna move on. Um, I am putting a little bit of gel on the end simply because I want the gel to hold the hair down so I don't get frizz, but I'm not going to try to curl the ends. So here's what we're looking like already. I'm going to go and finish this up. I'll bring you guys by. Hopefully I'll still be here. And then I can let you see what it looks like when I'm done. So stay tuned. <laughs> I don't know whether I am more angry or aggravated. <laughs> this is absolutely too tedious. Too tedious. I think I did the last curl. I started from the front and then had to lower. I hope I got all the sections in the back. I'll have to go and see because y'all, this was a task. This was a task. I didn't time myself. I wasn't going to put big curls in. So um, I thought it wouldn't take that long. Lord have mercy, my arms are just burning. That was a workout in and of itself. Okay, let me stop complaining, it's over. Okay, I am all done. And I think this went well. I don't really have a whole lot. I can see some pieces right now that are gonna be frizzy. So I tell you what, I'm gonna show you how I would fix these before they even become a problem. I'm gonna take my little aloe water and a little bit more of gel because these are sections like if i can see they're frizzy before they even dry i know they're going to be frizzy when they dry so my hair here in the top is a different texture anyway so i'm going to actually take the time to force these to curl by wrapping them around my finger Um, as you can see, as I'm doing this, you can look at the pieces here in the front, right near my eye, that I always talk about don't curl. So you see how I literally start there first and I have zero curl there almost. Um, you can barely see any definition. And this part here in the front is what gets seen the most. Okay, I don't wanna pile too much gel on because I don't want any flakes, though wet line is really, really, really good about not producing flakes. But I don't wanna press a good thing. So I'm just gonna wet it and like add a smidgen, y'all know I like to use that word, y'all know what that means, of gel and just to try to do this around my face too since it is the very first thing you see 
I would be a little bit more careful with that. This hair in the front just doesn't have a whole lot of curl definition, even by itself. So what I would do with these is take smaller pieces, be a little bit more intentional about the curling, maybe curl them a few extra times, a few extra loops around the finger, then the rest of it, and then see what happens. Um, hmm, this is not too bad here in the front, but just for the sake of showing you some little tricks, I'm going to just re-wet that. And since it's not dry yet, just recurl it in smaller pieces, a few more loops around the finger. For those of you who are not following me on Instagram, I will put my the Instagram link in the description box and you can go and check there. There are so many more pictures there of hairdos that sometimes don't make uh, YouTube and I will definitely be putting this over there. Now I'm going to come back and do a video. That is my intention. That's what I'm saying. But for sure, it'll be on Instagram. So go over there and just click the follow button and follow me there so that you can see how this comes out. I don't want to do too much of this. Okay, so now that I've rubbed that down and it looks kind of mashed, I'm going to take my rat tail comb and try, or well, maybe I'm not, and try to run it through. Why do I ever have anything that I need? Because I don't want this part here to be flat. You see this? Like I don't want that. And that's what rubbing it will do. You get the gist. In places where you know you got some extra frizz and you can see that while it's wet, just take some time and um, lay it down, get a little gel, go around the edges. And I'm gonna let this dry. It is about two o'clock in the afternoon. There is a no doubt in my mind I will be sitting under the dryer because there's no way this is gonna dry before night. And I'm not going through all of this work just to have it, just to have to sleep on it at night and just mess up the whole thing. All right, I'm gonna put these little pins here just to kind of force it to lay down and go back out of my face instead of to fluff inward. It's still gonna do what it wants to do. Okay, so there's a lot of product still that I can see but here is what all of this looks like. Don't laugh if there's places back here that are not curled because I completely missed it. I'll worry about it later. Unfortunately, that is why you really need to start from the bottom up. I'm only starting the front because my hair um, doesn't curl in the front and I wanted to make sure that I curl this with gel on my fingers while it was still wet. Usually after this, I spray a little, oh, here it is. My main choice hair polish. This is a really, really good um, spray sheen. It has a lot of great oils in it and I really like how it looks and feels, even though I don't use it that much. And so I'm gonna flip my hair over and do the same thing. And now I'm just gonna let it air dry. Try not to touch it as much as possible. I'm gonna let it completely air dry. Um, and then before bed, I'll sit under my dryer to make sure it's all completely dry. And this is gonna make it look weird, but I'll worry about it later. Um, investigate places where there is a lot of white product left. 
if you have low porosity hair, you really, really want to try to get that out if possible. If that means re-wetting it, re-shingling it, um, and it depends on the gel. Wet line does a really good job generally of drying clear with other products. I really have not had any problems with that. So hopefully this goes well um, too. So <laughs> I'm tired, I'm hungry. Okay guys, I will see you later when this dries. I'll let you know how it comes out. Hey guys, so I am back to show you what this wash and go looks like. So here is how everything came out. And I'm gonna share with you some things that I did and didn't do that I maybe should have done to make this a little better. I'm not saying I'm dissatisfied with it in any way. Um, I have tons of curls. Look at this. Tons, tons of curls. But there are some things I did in certain places, didn't do in certain places, and so I want to share um, all of that with you. It is, uh, this is not exactly when it dried. It's the next day, so maybe two days later. Um, I slept in my hair sock. Is that what it's called? Um the one by NBN Hair. I'll link it in the description box, but I slept in that, which does a great job of keeping those curls out of the way uh, without leaving a print on it and keeping the curls intact uh, without you know flattening your hair or whatever. So it does a great job of that. So I highly recommend that if you are a wash and go person, you will be amazed at how much longer it keeps your, your curls. Um, so let's talk about the products and get that out of the way before I get into um, my little list here of which I'm winging because I didn't write anything down. Um, so and I don't even have it with me, you guys. I use the um, Foresee Your Beauty hair products. Now I did use, because whenever I do a wash and go, you know you're adding layer and layer of product on your hair. For most of us, if you're a 4C, you're probably adding layers on top of your hair all the time. And the one thing that I really have a bad habit of remembering to talk about, because I really forget to do it a lot, to be honest, is to clarify your hair. It is so, so important if you are a low porosity person that you clarify your hair often. Um, I would suggest at a minimum once a month, at a minimum, because you know, we put on shampoo, well, shampoo cleanses the hair, then we put on a rinse out conditioner, that sticks to the hair. Some of the deep conditioner sticks to the hair. The leave-in sticks to the hair. The styler sticks to the hair. If you put oil on, that then just seals it all in, which is what we're trying to get for the health of our hair. But if you're struggling with keeping moisture in your hair, if you are struggling with like definition or your style's not coming out or if your hair seems to be acting funny, if you're low porosity, 99% of the time it's because you have some buildup on your hair. Now just think about doing that, all the processes I just named and doing it week after week after week after week without properly cleansing the hair. The shampoos that we use, we love sulfate free shampoos because they make the hair softer and more moisturized. It makes it e easier to deal with, but it also does not clean all of the uh, residue and oil and that build up off of your hair. It just does not. So we really need to at least once a month go in with a uh, sulfate shampoo and I'm gonna say sulfate shampoo poo or what I typically use I do have a sulfate shampoo that I like from um, it's right on tip of my tongue oh come on Biolodge <laughs> it finally came to me. I'm imagining the label in my head and what's on the label before it came. The Biolodge uh, Aloe line. Um, it is not marketed. It is not black owned, of course. It is not even marketed a whole lot for um, black people. I do see a, an occasional person of color in their marketing with hair that is way looser curls than mine. But I bought this line 
a couple of years ago, loved it. So I do use the shampoo from that that I really, really like. The other thing you can use that we often talk about and don't uh, talk about in body care a lot that we can use is a good African black soap shampoo. I know you've heard me talk about this before. I'm gonna show you mine on my last little bar. And you can get these you guys just about anywhere now all I suggest is make sure you have a real one make sure it looks like this here is what my bar looks like so it is not going to be a all black bar so if you get one of those out of the beauty supply store that is not African black soap this is what real African black soap looks like and so I buy it in these huge chunks and then I just literally take my uh, butter knife and slice it so that I'm only working with about this much at a time because it goes so far the second this stuff hits water it lathers instantly so I wish I could show you the piece that I did to wash my hair with like it was probably the size of like my finger and thumb put together about this much and it did my entire hair i do my face with it it just goes so far so um i got this particular one from pistachio works pistachio wonders and i have a video of some other items i got from them that i recorded months ago that I still need to edit and um, bring to you. But there are a lot of companies that sell that. Just make sure it looks like this and not black one. So total off, off track there. But I, you can also clarify with this black soap. It does a really good job of taking off gunk out of your hair. If you use like real basic bare bone black soap, it will be stripping. I do like the companies that add some shea butter or a couple of oils to kind of make the bar a little bit more moisturizing because you, then you get your hair clean, but it's not so stripped that you're just like, oh my gosh. And I have used some that were that are like that. Those are great for the face if you're suffering with acne or anything like that, but I wouldn't use that one on my hair. So what I started doing, girl, that was a long thing to say when all I'm trying to say is I <laughs> clarified my hair with the um, black soap first and then I used Forcia Beauty's Root Beer Shampoo. Y'all this was so fun. It's called Root Beer Thirst Quencher Shampoo and if you like root beer you would be amazed. I was so amazed at how much this smells exactly like root beer. So as you can see here's about what I used and it's a little bit more, you see? So it's not watery at all, but it's not really thick. So it's not one of those that you pour in your hand and then it starts dripping all through your fingers. You can control this, so it works really well. And so I did the African black soap. I followed up with this because I really wanted to use it. And it's another way to put a little bit of moisture back into your hair after the black soap. Um, and it kind of serves as a second wash to just make sure you've got everything off of your hair strand. So I used this and I really liked it. Really, really liked it. Um, what I did do was use this first on one section of my hair. And because there's so much buildup on it, I could tell that it needed to be stripped. So I went back and used the black soap first. So then when I used this, it felt much better. So nice and clean. This too lathers so so much you get so much lather from so little and it's gonna last a long long time you only need a dime size um, amount of this stuff really really good and it's just like root beer in your shower that's that's what it smells like I really enjoy that and I used a, a rinse out conditioner from I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I have a few favorites that I'm using right now that I really like. And because they're all so good, I normally just grab one. And I can't remember which one. I'm sorry. So I used another rinse out conditioner. And then I used uh, Forcia Beauty's Triple Milk Honey Cinnamon Deep Conditioner. Now this one is not a new product. This one is was part of her um, first collection of products. And she reformulated it. Um, and this one 
has a lot more slip than the previous one. That is the first thing I noticed. I actually put this on the night before and I slept in it. I didn't I didn't even use heat. So I when I use this, you guys, I use this. It is a thick, very rich deep conditioner, but not too heavy for your hair if you don't have thick hair. You could absolutely definitely use this. So I've got just a little bit more to that I can show you just kind of what it looks like. It smells so good. Triple milk cinnamon. It, you can get a whiff of cinnamon and look at this. Look how smooth it is. It feels so, so, so good. Oh, it's so, so nice and rich. Look at that. And it just smooths on dreamlike, dreamlike. I only have a little bit more to um, use. And so probably when I use, because I'm not even done with the other one that I used the first time, the same one. And so I will probably just put them together to finish it in my next, the next time I use um, the 4C product. So this was very good. I slept in it, rinsed it out the next morning. And you know, that is the favorite part of my wash day, rinsing out a good slippy deep conditioner. I love, love, love how it left that moisture in my hair, but I was able to just all of that tangled hair just falling out. It is just, I love it. I absolutely love getting that tangled hair out of my hair. And so when I get a nice, smooth, deep conditioner that just gets it all out, I just, it's the simple things with me, you guys. I can get excited about little things. That's a very, very good deep conditioner. Great job, Des, reformulating that. If you have this one from before, and you liked it, you will love it this time. The other one was very nice, it was good. But this one, you, you, you can definitely tell the difference and it's very, very good. And I use her daily leave-in and I don't have it. I just looked and I didn't bring it down here. Um, my label fell off, but it still works really, really good. It has some of the similar color as, no, it's like a taupe color, kind of a light taupe, but very moisturizing. I really, really um, went in with the leave-in conditioner. I put, I put it in in the shower because I really wanted my hair to be really moisturized under this gel and really, you know, deep, deep conditioners and leave-ins, I really go hard for anyway. And so I used a good bit of leave-in and um, it's one of those that really does penetrate instantly, but it didn't leave my hair super mushy soft. Do you have some leave-ins if you use too much of it? Like it's just too much. And I'm, I can think of one or two right now, right off the bat that I like, but you have to really be cognizant of how much you're putting in your hair because it can just be too mushy. So I like this leave-in and like that it went in fine in the shower. I threw my plastic cap on. Also, be sure to try the leave-in if you haven't. You will like that as well. So I put my plastic cap on and got out of the shower, came back here, and then I added in the front of my hair, which is what you saw before, I tried the Mystic Mermaid. And I tried to be sparingly with this because now my hair is already moisturized. You know, the water is in it, the leave-in is in it. And this, I'm gonna show you what it's like now that I've opened it. So it's called a cream gel. That's exactly what it looks like. That was a great, great description of it. So here is what it's like. So it's like this perfect cream styler. Um, and it's jelly-like and cream-like, but it's not tacky. So it doesn't have that tack to it as if it's supposed to be a gel. It really is just a styler. It's so pretty and it smells so, some candy. What is it smelling like? I'm trying to see what's the scent to this. I can't determine. I smell some sort of candy and I don't know what it is. It's like a sweet candy-ish fragrance. But you know what? It doesn't smell like a pink candy or a red candy. You guys know how I am about my scents and being able to almost see what they should smell like. So this would be a purple colored candy. That's exactly what it smells like to me. That probably makes no sense to some of you, but 
you get it. It's not a fufu light candy, not minty, not anything like that, but just just a nice, subtle, natural uh, fragrance for a candy. So, very good. And this I used right here in the top, the first two sections of my hair, and then in lieu of using the custard, I would use the wet line gel, which you saw. So, that is all of that. It took me forever because I have a lot of hair. And then once you think about if your hair is grown, that is just more hair to deal with. And what I find with the wash and goes is as my hair get longer, wash and goes take much more work. And those twist outs or braid outs, no time. It's just so much faster. It was just another reminder why I don't like wash and goes. But now let me tell you what I learned that I wanna share with you. If you are uh, thinking about trying one, have been trying it, can't quite perfect it, just some tips that I think may be of benefit to you. First thing I would say is, and especially if you're low porosity, so this will be totally different if maybe you don't have my texture of hair, if you don't have low porosity hair, so I'm coming from that standpoint. I would say, don't use so much leave-in. Don't use so much leave-in. So many people hone on using a lot of leave-in because it um, it's the base for moisture in your hair. If you want a wash and go that lasts, if you just want the curls and you don't really care, if you got a lot of definition, you just want um, hair that you just don't have to do anything to for a few days and you like the, you know, the bigger it gets with the less definition and the volume, then then you should use a leave-in. But if you like definition and you want to see the coils in your hair and you want it to last, I'm gonna say not to use as much leave-in. Um, you've seen me apply leave-in and you know how I can be. I really could have probably used half the amount of leave-in. Also, doing it in the shower, I do believe just adds extra to that. So I'm not going to say don't use it in the shower, but if you use it in the shower, definitely only use a small amount because now you've got this water inside your hair strand and then you're going to put the leave in on top of that. And now all of that is absorbing into your hair strands. And if you use a lot of leave in, so now it's just that the hair strand is just swole, swollen, swell, swole. The hair is swollen. So it, um, it's thick like a sponge. Like it's got so much water in it now that it can't hold anything else. It's, you know, it's kind of swollen up and there's so much water inside. When you go to put gel on top of that, what now has happened is you have leave in the water, your hair is swollen, is so much hydration on the inside. If you put a gel on top of that, the moisture can overwhelm the hold. I hope that makes sense. So the purpose of the gel is to hold the curls in place. But if you've got so much water on the inside, like it's just swollen with water, and then you put that layer of gel on the outside, you're not gonna get a lot of hold. I'm gonna say that this hair is probably not gonna last me a week. It probably could, but what I like for a wash and go to do, it probably won't last me a week. When I like to do a wash and go, because of the time it takes, girl, I want a wash and go that lasts all week long. So for me, I know that that's gonna mean I'm gonna have a crunch. I'm gonna have a cast on my hair and I'm okay with that. I did not stretch this out for that same reason. If I go to manipulating this and mess with that gel cast and pull all of the hold off of my hair, Especially if I go to sweat or spend any time outside in the humidity, then my hair is going to lose definition. It's going to get puffier. I'm going to get more volume and the hair is not going to last all week. Um, so I think that's what I'm trying to say. If you just don't overuse the leave-in if you want really defined hair that lasts. If you're okay with the puff, the, the afro by the end of the week, 
then you're fine. Go hard with the with the leave in. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I don't think again product buildup. My low porosity hair. I don't think it needed so many products. So now I've got the water, the leave in, and then I added the um, Mystic Mermaid to it. Which, by the way, let me tell you what is in here: water, aloe vera, Irish moss extract, glycerin, sea kelp extract, olive oil, avocado oil ammonium okay the vp polymer co polymer the the one that gives it the stick uh fragrance and preservative there's purple yam rosemary extract and xanthan gum so um so a lot of those are also moisturizing ingredients and the co polymer is to give it a little hold all of that to say i don't think i needed all that I could have just done the leave-in and the gel. If I had done that, I think I would have gotten more uh, hold. I would have gotten... Okay, so see what's happening here. Let me show you this. And this is going to be so confusing, guys, because my hair has so many different textures. So what works on one section doesn't work on another section. But the areas where I use the Mystic Mermaid... I just feel like once I added the gel on top of that, now I just put too many products on it. So as you can see, it doesn't have a lot of definition here. There is there is definition, but there's a little bit more, I don't wanna call it frizz. It's just not as defined, right? So you can't necessarily see curls. But also about the bang area of my hair just doesn't have curl anywhere. So I'm trying to, I mean, it won't curl anyway. These sections that just plop in my face, no matter what, they don't curl up. So I'm trying not to even include that. But this area here is area where I definitely added the Mystic Mermaid and then gel. So you see how the gel was not able to capture those curls in a very defined way. We clearly can see it's curled because it's all drawn up, but just not very defined. So what I did after that was not use the Mystic Mermaid on the other parts of my hair. I did just the gel and I, the leave-in and then the gel. So if we take this now out of the way, I'm just going to have to hold it. See how the curls are just slightly more defined? Just a little bit more. And also, now, again, this crown area of my hair, total different texture. So no matter what I put in the crown section of my hair, it is not going to define well. It is unruly and it just is, y'all, it's just different. It's just different. It doesn't define. It just does not define. The hair in the front, hangs loose, and has no curl. This up here has plenty of curl, but it's more 4C-ish. It just does not have very specifically defined curls that you can identify. So um, I expect this from this section, right? And actually this is not bad considering how it normally looks. So here's that section, I hope you can see. So again, when I talk about any tips that I'm giving, I don't include this section because, again, it's totally different. Now, if I show you the very back, picking all of that out of the way, here is my curls in the back. Total different texture. So you see how much curl that has? Perfectly round, beautiful spirals. Nice and shiny formed beautifully and I can get these without even much of a, a shingling method. It just kind of falls its way on its own. Now it would be nice if all of my hair did this. I knew I'd get some lasting um, a lasting set for the week. This just I just love that. I love all of it. Don't get me wrong. But 
another reason wash and go is just not my thing because there's so many textures of hair notice that if you're having trouble some areas look okay some not look at that hair sometimes when it's dry i'm not gonna say wet look at it when it's dry and you can see that that hair sometimes looks a little different now i am not complaining about my hair i'm going to wear it until the wheels fall off as long as i can but i wanted you to see what can happen if you've got different textures if uh, it is low porosity if it um, has product, you know, more product or less product. So there's no order here. I don't have no nice little list I can list for you, but I just want you to just kind of be aware of things that can happen and use some of the things I'm telling you to maybe it may not fix yours but may help in deciding if you want to try it or explain what things may happen. Now for this area, this 4C area here in the top that doesn't define well, um, I use a lot of gel. I use a lot of gel because I know that this has to be, and then I use my finger you know, to coil it from root to tip all the way down because I know that that's what that requires in order to get any definition at all. It's going to take more time. I have to curl it in smaller pieces. That's the only way that's going to work. Y'all, this is turned into a long, long segment, but I don't think I ever spoke on wash and goes before. And so for those of you who love them, I just wanted to give you some, um, First of all, bring it to you to let you know that I, I do try to do some and I value my uh, Wash and Go subscribers. But for those of you who don't, just some things to watch out for. Things to watch out for. So maybe we can recap. Let's see if we learned anything. Um, not too much leave in if you want definition and lasting longer hair. I wouldn't use too much definition. I mean, too much leave in. Make peace with you're gonna have a gel cast. That's that's the whole point of the gel, to cast your hair and capture those curls. You gotta be okay with that if you want one that lasts. Um, two, if you're going to do it in the shower, I would say use about half the amount of leave in that you would typically use outside the shower. Cause now, yeah, the water, the swelling, it, it, it's, it's a lot. And uh, don't use too many products. I, I think a wash and go leave in and a gel would be adequate for most of us. Most of us can get away with just those two products. Um, I think it will let you keep your styles longer, um, whatever the state of your hair is. I think that it'll just make it last longer. Um, so all the products I used went well. I enjoyed every single one of them. I'm going to do a separate video on the other products of hers that I've been using because I am so in love with them. I think she did such a marvelous job with those new products. But for the ones that I use new today, the shampoo I loved and I really like this cream gel. I think it's going to be awesome when I do a twist out because of that cream gel and you can like see the product is shiny so i know it's going to give a nice um twist out or, or braid out whatever i do but for this you guys tell me what you tell me what you think here's the other thing too i want to say about gels you know that some of them work for some hair some of them don't i've never ever ever had wet line to flake up on me with any leave-in or styler I've ever used. It is the only one that has not flaked on me in some capacity. Um, I've used lighter ones. I've used, I can go heavy with the leave-in, light with the leave-in. The gel doesn't flake. I can use um, any brand's product. I can use a styler and then put the leave in and put the gel on top, no flakes. So if you haven't found one that doesn't flake on you, I would say try wet line. Very, very good shine, lots of nice hold, no flaking. 
that's been my experience. If there's any way I can help you guys, any questions you want to ask, let me know. Now, the hair is super soft. That I can say. Um, I didn't have to break a gel cast because I had so much leave-in in it. Again, the moisture overwhelmed some of the gel, so I didn't have to break a gel cast. I didn't squeeze it. I didn't do any of that. Uh, I really haven't touched it much at all until now. And so it is hecka moisturized. The leave-in does a great, great job in addition to the water with adding moisture in there and keeping that in. So if you just prefer moisture over definition, then um, yeah, go ham with your leave-in. That one was a very good one to use under here. My hair feels amazing, absolutely amazing. So again, I didn't stretch it. I won't stretch it because that's just gonna give me less frizz. I mean, gonna give me more frizz and it's gonna shorten the length of time that I can wear this. And I'm gonna just wear it like it is. Maybe, maybe I will get to come back and shoot a clip of it after a couple of days after it has fallen some, it's not gonna look any better because I'm, I'm going to the gym. That's just gonna happen. And so I know it's gonna sweat out. This is probably as best as it's gonna look. So I, I would, let's just take this and end this video right here and right now. All right, you guys, any questions, put those down below. Any comments, any tips you can share for me or for other subscribers on how you are able to uh, get a lasting wash and go drop that down below. We'll be glad to hear it. Um, helpful to share. I'd love to share any information that I have and I want you to learn from each other as well. So that's it, you guys. Long, long video. Hope it was helpful. Um, I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.